Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, 7 days a week, just log into kmdlaw.com, that's kmdlaw.com, or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW, that's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents, They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be, because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to sing a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. Aquadam.net. Give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. Uh, you're left with the mess to clean up, having to deal with the insurance company, uh, not to mention the memories that are lost that you can never replace. Uh, to those who live in flood-prone and hurricane-prone areas, uh, which is just around the corner, prepare now. Hurricane season is right around the corner. Visit Aquadam.net to see how they can help you prepare to avoid flood damage this season and every season thereafter. And Aquadam can be another tool in your arsenal uh, to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. A coffer dam, using water to control water, that can protect your home, your business, your church, your neighborhood, like a dam, but without the beavers. Give Aquadam a call at 707-764-2119, 707-764-2119, or look them up online at Aquadam.net. Uh, they're also on Facebook at Aquadam Inc., Or call or email them today. They can help you out. Give them a call. Uh, Tell them Opperman Report sent you. Opperman Report, that's 10% off the price to anyone who mentions the Opperman Report. It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman, and you can find me at Opperman Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting from my website, emailrevealer.com. And if you like today's show, be sure and check out our uh, members section at operamentreport.com where we have exclusive content that's available only to paying members. Um, starting this week, Thursday, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm going to be doing a weekly uh, video blog, uh, or no, a video podcast live uh, on GetVocal.com. 
Tracom. That's G E C B O K L dot com. The brand new startup company. And we'll be on there live every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So you can see me as well as hear me. Uh, our archives are free, always free at uh, speaker.com. You can find our guest today, uh, Mr. Stephen Hoppenberg. We've done about seven interviews with Mr. Hoppenberg. You can find on our speaker.com uh, channel where all our archives are free. Uh, Mr. Hoppenberg is the former business partner and mentor to Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, he's been aware of Epstein's connection to the intelligence circles of many, many years. Uh, he was the president of Tower Financial, which Epstein was also a business partner in. Uh, there were some irregularities there that caused some uh, illegal convictions. And Mr. Epstein walked away with the clean hands and, and leaving Mr. Hoffenberg holding the bag. And Mr. Hoffenberg has also been the, uh, the CEO of the New York Post. And very, very uh, uh, successful financial career in, in his life. Did, did, did I ever work for Mr. Hoffenberg? Yes, you said it correctly, Ed. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, Stephen Hoffenberg is the man that saved the New York Post from going out of business when it was stuck in a crisis and was about to close or be gobbled up by the Daily News, and that would have been the end of the New York Post. Also, Stephen Hoffenberg, unfortunately, was hurt at Towers Financial by Jeffrey Epstein and his team that are in the mix now on all of the crimes wherein Hoffenberg was set up and made a fool of by Jeffrey Epstein and his people and got stuck with the criminal penalty. And that's really a big story. There are three books being put together now about that. But let's go forward and explain some deep information as to what's going on in the Jeffrey Epstein mystery, which is truly a mystery. There's 75% of the Jeffrey Epstein story not revealed so far. So we're going to enlighten the listeners and the public. Go ahead, Ed. So I guess uh, where we are today is all the action is going on down in the Virgin Islands. Yes, the Virgin Islands right now are leading what's taking place with the $600 million approximately of Jeffrey Epstein's estate. And the unbelievable arrogance of Gary Indyke, who is the number one executor of the estate, who has been alleged to be the Jeffrey Epstein's co-conspirator in the crimes that have started to come out in the Virgin Island courts. And he has been charged. Darren Indyke has been charged with the same crimes that Jeffrey Epstein was charged with in the majority, which is shocking for someone to try to be the executor of a $600 million estate being charged with the same crimes of Jeffrey Epstein. That's what's taking place. It's shocking. It's it, never been done before. It's also very shocking, too, that, that this whole estate was created two days before uh, the suicide or the death. There's no question that if the federal United States government were to object to the validity of the estate, it could be crumbled easily. Easily. Because it's an illegitimate estate. There's no question of that. And many people have asked and have written the Attorney General of the United States pleading with him to take over this estate. And that's a legitimate request the United States Attorney General. And as the election gets closer and we get further down the road toward November, we have Bernie Sanders dropped out today yeah. of the race, and now it's Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. This Jeffrey Epstein mystery that embroils so many powerful people could cause a major change in the Jeffrey Epstein ways 
of the illegal estate methods. But we're going to talk about that now. Go ahead. Now, how is it, uh, Rebecca, how is it this case wound up in the Virgin Islands? Jeffrey Epstein, after his first suicide attempt or first murder attempt, whatever you choose to call it, decided to sign a will and trust agreement two days before his death was actually 48 hours before the Jeffrey Epstein suicide or assisted murder that he signed documents moving his assets in total that could be moved to the Virgin Islands. And then his partners in crime, the actual co-conspirators of Jeffrey Epstein, Darren Indyke, a man that's been with Epstein since 92, and before that, 92 is when Darren Indyke went on to practice law for Golden Wattel, who was the Jeffrey Epstein main law firm and also worked for Towers Financial. And myself, in a whole bunch of rather unusual cases that Jeffrey Epstein set up, now we have Darren Indyke, the lawyer and co-conspirator Jeffrey Epstein, charged with the crimes of raping the girls or enabling the rapes of the girls and massive financial fraud for hundreds of millions of dollars in the estate. And Darren Indyke and his associate co-executor are trying to run the $600 million. And the Virgin Islands Attorney General is saying, no way can a co-conspirator in the crimes of Jeffrey Epstein run the $600 million. It's arrogant, it's ridiculous, and it's impossible under the rule of law. And that's what's taking place now in the courts in the Virgin Islands. Now, is, is there any freeze on these funds? Do we know where they are? Or what bank accounts? There is an account for this, right? There is a law firm on the Virgin Islands that has been the Jeffrey Epstein personal law firm for years, which is another conflict of interest with this $600 million. This law firm should not be allowed to continue to represent this trust because this law firm was an enabler to Jeffrey Epstein's crimes so far and an enabler to Darren Indyke's crimes so far. So all of this is now the problem of every creditor that has claims in the $600 million Epstein estate. It's a fiasco. And the Attorney General of the Virgin Islands filed papers on Friday throwing up her hands, saying this is outrageous. We cannot empower the co-conspirators of Jeffrey Epstein to run the $600 million in any capacity with the victims and creditors. She said, that's impossible. And that's what's taking place now where the Attorney General of the Virgin Islands has asked the Superior Court in the Virgin Islands to look into this matter and make a ruling on the legitimacy of what they're attempting to do with the $600 million that belongs to creditors, not to this estate. Now, a couple of issues here is that this estate, this estate, this trust, the one that Darren Indyke has described, has been paying the legal fees and the, uh, of uh, Kathleen Maxwell. And, I, and her legal fees have also hurt her expenses to elude uh, investigation. Well, I announced couple of months ago that Christine, Chris, Justine Maxwell was being paid by Jeffrey Epstein's own money 
right. by agreement before he died for a long time in order to support her. Then when Jeffrey Epstein died, I said there was no termination of the agreement to continue to pay the overhead for Jocelyn Maxwell. And it was paid illegally by the use of money somehow derived from the $600 million. There has not been a full forensic audit as to how Darren Edendike handled the over $600 million. When there will be a forensic audit that will take place, he'll be charged possibly with very substantial financial crimes in wasting the $600 million. And that's the concern of the Attorney General of the Virgin Islands and the creditors. I talk to the victims all the time, and they're petrified. And you know, we know for a fact now that he's been paying Maxwell's legal fees and, and uh, hiding out fees because she filed a lawsuit down in the Virgin Islands trying to contain these. Uh, yes, she appeared by counsel giving jurisdiction to the Virgin Islands Attorney General to charge her in other misconduct if the attorney general decides to include Maxwell into the lawsuits against Darren Indyke, which the attorney general can do and probably will take place. Now, from what I understand from the article you sent me, there's some of the issues here is that the, uh, the Jeffrey Epstein Trust, uh, one thing they wanted was non-disclosure uh, agreements from the victims. Yeah, they wanted the victims to forego, forego any claims to any third parties that were still liable after the victims settled for a smaller amount of money than they were entitled to. They are trying to get the victims to reduce their claims and settle for very little money compared to what they could win in normal damages in front of a jury. See, what hasn't come out yet is that the settlements that would be on the table would be very small compared to the estate size and what was going to be done. And that was the problem with Darren Indyke, not the problem with the claims administrator from 9-11. It was Darren Indyke's idea to reduce the settlements to the victims and creditors. And that's ridiculous, really outrageous misconduct while he enriches himself. His money, Darren Indyke, he's worth something, 15 or $20 million. This all comes from Jeffrey Epstein's crimes. Mm. That's been the allegation against Darren Indyke, that his net worth comes from the Jeffrey Epstein crimes. And there's some other valuable assets and properties that are in Epstein's brother's name who did something, did a mess, it's kind of fortunate in his, uh, his work life. Well, there is an awful lot of assets and money in Mark Epstein's name, yes, who worked with his brother in a very substantial real estate project in New York City and in other locations that turned out to be very, very profitable. The 301 East 66th Street, New York City building, which is a very big condominium operation, is fronted by Mark Epstein for his brother Jeffrey Epstein, where crimes took place regularly of rapes of girls. And so that's happening right now where he hasn't been served with papers to foreclose on those properties, which is going to take place, definitely going to take place. The New York City properties will be foreclosed on down the road. Because these are assets above and beyond the $600 million that we know about that's in the estate. Oh, it is. 
an awful lot of money in addition to the $600 million available for collection around the world, right. not just in New York City, around the world that's available for collection. We have not seen a true accounting of the money that is available for the creditors and the victims. One of the other issues that the estate is fighting is that they, they don't want the, uh, the victims to be able to go after the third parties that were also involved in, in facilitating these crimes, correct? Yes, they are attempting to block the victims and obstruct justice where justice has to go forward under due process. But that's Darren Indyke's maneuver and method that he knows about, because the victims can go after him easily on charges of what he was the co-conspirator with Jeffrey Epstein since the beginning of the misconduct. And it goes back to a long time ago, 1992, and before then. For Jeffrey Epstein's side, 1992 was when Darren Indyke became licensed to practice law. But he's been involved with this Jeffrey Epstein enterprise for decades. And he's the real target. He's yeah, the real target now. And it's a huge conflict of interest uh, to have someone who was a potential uh, defendant uh, paying other potential defendants, Maxwell, from the, from the fund, uh, would also be administering this fund. The whole estate of $600 million is in conflict right now, where it's improper, absolutely improper, and would not occur in the federal court in New York City. It would never be allowed. And that's where the problem is. And the Attorney General of the Virgin Islands has charged in court crimes in a civil case against Darren Indyke and his assistant, Associate Khan. They've been charged with crimes in the pending lawsuits in the Virgin Islands. And that's very, very serious when the $600 million is being run by men who've been charged with co-conspiracy of Jeffrey Epstein on the Virgin Islands. It's shocking. Now, when we talk about the victims in this case, right, um, the average person would say, well, these victims, these young girls, have already sued and received compensation. Uh, they, they sued the, uh, the victims' advocacy board there, whatever that agency was, and then they won that case, but there was no uh, uh, compensation for that. Uh, what other victims are there? There has been lawsuits taking place for a long time by rape victims and by Towers financial victims, where Jeffrey Epstein embezzled the money to create the Epstein enterprise with Darren Indyke with his participation. So there are these financial victims that have claims of an embezzlement against Jeffrey Epstein and Darren Indyke right now. And there were three legal proceedings filed before the death of Jeffrey Epstein, and there was a fourth one being prepared, and then Jeffrey Epstein died. So there's going to be another case taken on, and I've been talking to you, Ed, informally about consideration in using your training as a private investigator to represent the Towers financial victims. There is an interesting requirement there for those poor victims who need counsel and need experts to help them. Yeah, I'm offering the right there to record it. I'm accepting the offer. I'll take the work. <laughs> we on that. Well, well, you... Uh, you, know, you, know, you know me, Steve. I'm like a dog with a bone when it comes to the test. And we went after this guy since 2013. Uh, where I would love uh, to, to participate in that kind of work. Now, but they, they say that, okay, so 
the addition, first of all, the, the court ruling was, though, was that you were on the hook. For the, how many of these tower financial victims are there? How many victims are there? No, the court, oh, there's 200,000 investors belonging to pension plans and other pension facilities that are investors in Towers Financial. There's 3,300 or some amount near that of pension arrangements, gotcha. which these investors belong to. So these investors have been talking to me because I was the one that was in agreement with the court on the order of restitution. But you see, I'm not allowed to individually represent these victims, or I would have already collected the money. They would have been paid already, because the victims' claims against Jeffrey Epstein and the other debtors alongside of Jeffrey Epstein to these victims are very substantial. But the only one allowed to technically represent them in a courtroom is the government of the United States. They are the collection agent for these towers financial victims. And they would cooperate with you, Ed, and your team of experts in collecting because they need someone like you, Ed, that can show them the roadmap to the collection. Okay, but the order of restitution is against you right now. Has there ever been an attempt, and you said this, this prior litigation, to, to go after Epstein? Uh, how, how are those cases working out? What, what, is there any judgment or what, there, there were three attempts to go after Epstein. And two of those attempts, there were very deep discussions with the judges as to how to proceed because there were changes in the rules as who has the authority to move on behalf of the victims. And the judges requested me to stand down and let the victims stand up. And that's what I introduced to you, Ed, what the judges requested of me, to stand down, let the victims stand up with experts, and let the victims proceed with the government to go after this estate with competent investigators. Okay, so that's what it's up to right now. There's tons of paperwork online, tons of it, of these cases are all online. And much more has been evidence since the death of Jeffrey Epstein last summer. Okay. We have tons of evidence now that we never had, never had. And you could do an effective job helping the United States government right. stop this crime. I right love the United States government. <laughs> okay, I would love to, to help them. But, uh, but the thing is, though, but the, the, the U.S. government has not been uh, effective in this up until now. Uh, is there some way that this can be uh, moved forward in the Virgin Islands? You can do it in either location. It's up okay. to you. You could do it on the Virgin Islands, but you can also work with your local U.S. government representative there in Florida, where you're located now, and you have a senator that might be interested in listening to you, and you have congressmen that would definitely be interested in listening to you, and there's an opportunity to be had to help these victims, and you would be helping all the victims. If you were aggressive. Now, the, the, the sexual rape victims, can they get a second bite of this apple? They haven't had a true opportunity to get the first bite because everything they tried to do got blocked by Darren Indyke, the co conspirator of Jeffrey Epstein. It didn't work. Anything that took place so far was put on hold because of Darren Indyke's seeking to run the $600 million. He has to be removed. 
and he has to be removed quickly because he and his law firm are conflicted out of the case, and they must be removed. And you can do that. You you can do that. I would love to do this. Yeah, no, yes. This would be a, a dream, a dream of a lifetime. Okay. Um, let's take a little commercial break. We're here with yes. Stephen Hoffenberg, the former CEO of the New York Post, uh, the former CEO of Tower Financial, uh, ex business partner of Jeffrey Epstein, and now is spearheading this uh, challenge and this movement here to. Uh, Get compensation back to, to Epstein's victims of every sort uh, throughout our history uh, from the beginning. We'll be right back with more Stephen Hoffenberg after these messages. And now a word from our sponsors. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to sing a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. Tina Helmuth is writing an ongoing series of fact fiction books that boldly takes on today's most heinous crimes. Suffer the Little Children, The Wrath of the Father, and Unbreakable. Deeply researched and mixed with the supernatural, good versus evil makes these thrillers hard to put down. Available at lulu.com in paperback or ebook. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, 7 days a week, just log into kmdlaw.com, that's kmdlaw.com, or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW, that's 833-4-KMD-LAW personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, Private Investigator Ed Opperman. Uh, don't forget, coming up this Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm going to be doing a, a live video podcast. My first guest is going to be William Ramsey. Uh, we're going to be discussing the West Memphis 3 case. Uh, it's going to be my first show with uh, Ramsey uh, since Terry Hobbs came on my show. You might have to recall the whole incident with the Oxygen Channel accusing Terry Hobbs. Uh, in that case, and uh, I talked to Terry Hobbs in an interview the other night. We're going to be airing it this weekend. Uh, but I'll be talking live to William Ramsey this uh, Thursday evening. It's on vocal.com. Get vocal.com. G E T B O K L.com. 
Well, we're here today with Stephen Hoffenberg, uh, former CEO of the New York Post, uh, former partner with Jeffrey Epstein, and now going after uh, representing and helping out the Epstein victims uh, receive proper compensation. Mr. Hoffenberg, in the litigation, the, the criminal negotiations down there in Palm Beach, they, were, they, they, they included financial uh, negotiations and compensation and agreements with the victims down there. But in that agreement, they said that the victims could not go after co-defendants and, and third parties. Is there some way to overturn that? You don't have to overturn that because that's a separate ruling that doesn't go past the limits of that page, meaning it doesn't cover the whole world right. and it doesn't cover the whole United States, does not cover the Virgin Islands. It dealt particularly with a litigation in Florida and what the court ruled in 2019 is Epstein's dead, so there's no reason to consider any challenges. If something comes up down the road, we'll look at it. But this is not going to come up because w the claims that will be brought are not Florida claims. They're New York claims. And that ruling does not include the New York federal court. They're specifically outside of that ruling. So they can do whatever they choose to do. And the Washington federal court can do what they want to do. And the Virgin Islands, United States federal court can do what they want to do. There's no prohibition. Well, what about this? This is interesting. What about some of these uh, filings that have been sealed uh, in this case? Uh, could the Virgin Islands go and, and obtain those, those documents and then unseal them then, then the Virgin Islands? Well, that's a very interesting question because just Lane Maxwell... Right. Is, is one of the primary litigants to seal those files. And she wants the estate of Jeffrey Epstein's $600 million to pay the legal fees to seal those files and names and misconduct or whatever's in the files that the people listed in those cases don't want exposed. So the answer is yes. And they're waiting for a ruling now in the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit on if those files are going to be sealed permanently or not. So that's another big question as to what will happen. Yeah, now some third parties have come forward and they've uh, affirmed the motion, affirmed the court motions they've, they've entered in that case. Um, saying, hey, I, I want this sealed as well because my name is in this. I want it kept sealed. Uh, do you have any idea who those uh, plaintiffs are? Well, there's been some political people that have stepped forward and said that their friendship with Jeffrey Epstein caused their name to be entered into the court. And that's been exposed. And they said this is not due process because they're being charged by guessing, not by reading evidentiary documents, just because their name was affiliated with Jeffrey Epstein. So that's a very serious legal rule, what's going to happen in that case. When you see these photographs of Epstein with people like uh, Bill Gates, right, uh, what, what do you make of this? Was, was, were all of his contacts... Uh, nefarious in nature or some of them innocent? Well, he had a motive as a master manipulator to develop relationships for social contact. And he was always on the hunt to find prominent people, the rich and famous, in order to bring them into his spider's web and take advantage of all of them, as he did Prince Andrew. Right. He destroyed Prince Andrew's life, literally destroyed it. And that was Epstein's motive, to get trophies such as Prince Andrew. He did it with Bill Clinton. 
it's amazing how Bill Clinton fell for it and Hillary Clinton fell for his manipulation. It's just shocking that he was able to get himself inside the Clinton Foundation, which you know all about, Ed. Yeah. It, it is fascinating that he was able to, to insert himself in so many different places. It's one guy from Brooklyn. One man from Brooklyn, from a very humble background. Yeah was able to capture the rich and the famous. Capture them. Yeah, yeah. And, and what do you think's happened to all these videos and stuff, the video equipment down there? Who's in possession of that stuff now, all that, all that material? Well, there's been reports that the federal government of the United States has taken possession of a lot of the videos and a lot of the evidence and there's been reports that the Russian government is also in that loop with a Palm Beach former police officer that relocated to Russia claiming to have encrypted information that are videos yeah. and evidence. You know, I had John Dugan on my show. I talked to him before and after that, you know. Have you talked to Dugan? I didn't talk to him, but I... He talked to many journalists that interviewed him. Okay, I, I, I spoke to him before this, you know, um, and I asked him what he knew about us, and he said nothing. I don't know, I just answered that nothing. Then later on, it comes out, and you know, Sean Atwood is up there visiting, talking to him in Russia, and he says, Oh, yeah, I've got this hard drive that this guy gave me, you know. Uh, so it's a whole different set of stories. I can send you both the before interview and the after interview. And then uh, I interviewed two the true crime reporter that was there visiting him in Russia when they opened this file and they were so nervous they didn't look at it, you know. But well, it's just a kind of hard story to swallow to as well, you know. This is when he recognized some Democratic politicians. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, all this is kind of hard to swallow as far as Dugan goes. I don't find it to be very credible. So other people, too, he, he posted a photograph of the hard drive. And some other people have said, hey, this hard drive wasn't even... Uh, uh, in the uh, manufacturing in, in the time period that he claims it would have had to have been. That's so, amusing that it wasn't even available. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what you know, people have sent me. I, you know, I'm not an expert in that. I didn't look into it that far. I've kind of given up a, a hope on Dugan. Uh, so, so, but you have other sources telling me that the Russians being in possession of this? Well, the sources claim that Dugan is in Russia yeah, under in Russia. some particular under some protection that he contends he needs from the Epstein case. I have no idea what's true, but there, there's no question that the videos were in the possession of Epstein and whoever he designated to have it, because when the raids took place right. in his homes, the equipment and the videos were gone. They weren't there. And then there was a question, if you'll recall, two weeks before the 2016 election, the FBI Director Comey reopened an investigation into the candidate Hillary Clinton under the pretext that there was new that showed up on the Anthony Weiner computers. Right. And what's been said is that's evidence of misconduct of the Clintons that came directly from Jeffrey Epstein's library. So there's been stories, but there's no question that the videos were available and somebody took them. Yeah, it's interesting, too. Eric Prince uh, was one of the people saying that he was aware of the material on Epstein's uh, Wiener's uh, laptop. Um, and right around that time, he made a very large contribution. Uh, no one thought Trump was going to win. Uh, but right around that time, he made a very large contribution. Like, like he had an idea that, that, that something was up. Um, who knows? Who knows? Um, well, the New York City Police Department right. were the first ones to capture that evidence. And then that evidence was moved to the FBI at the time of the Clinton-Trump presidential race. 
So that's why that investigation was reopened two weeks before the race of 2016. Some say that caused Clinton the race. Yeah. And well, one thing to back to the Dugan story, um, and you all saw the search warrant execution, the videos of the search warrant executions of that home. The, the, the tapes were removed at that point uh, when the police got there. So how did this cop who gave it to Dugan, how did he come into possession of it if it was cleaned out of it before, uh, asking, before the cops got there? Yeah, well, yeah. Dugan has credibility problems, yeah. substantial credibility problems, because that was well established that Epstein was tipped off right. about that raid. And everything was removed. So there's yeah. credibility problems with Dugan. Fascinating that, that so much was removed and so much wasn't removed. That the, the school transcripts of these students was there in the house when they did the raid. Uh, in some possession of it. Just fascinating what was there and what was even bothered to be removed. Some of the most incriminating stuff you would think. Uh, well, you never know how much time they had yeah. from when they were given notice that the raid was going to take place. They didn't have weeks and months before the raid. That was pretty evident. What do you make of the, the photographs in there? Because there's a lot of photographs of little babies, and there's a lot of photographs of photograph Castro, and there's a photograph of the Pope. What do you make of that? It doesn't make sense as to what Epstein's manipulation was. It's clear he had a model for his manipulation, and he wanted to be among the rich and the famous. That's very clear, because he did so much destruction to Bill Clinton, to Hillary Clinton, to Prince Andrew, to others like Alan Dershowitz. He's done tremendous damage to many people, to their credibility. He's gotten Dershowitz into massive lawsuits. Massive. So we're going to see. How do you get into into Cuba and Castro? (laughs) No, I actually would not bother with Castro because he's not going to be a player. I think that was just for the glory of showing people that he could get to anybody he chose to get to. Many people have said that Epstein was on a terrible ego trip. There's been a lot published that Epstein's ego was out of control, totally out of control, as to how powerful he was. About a year ago, there was a lot of talk about Zorro Ranch in New Mexico. Now we hear nothing about it. What do you know? Well, Zorro Ranch in New Mexico has been an issue with New Mexico, the state, as to various contracts that were prepared by the state of New Mexico with Epstein and his holdings. And there have been battles taking place, and that's open to some degree. And there's a lot of prior proceedings and negotiations to review. And there were supposedly crimes at the Zorro Ranch that were very substantial, very substantial, that have been reported. But once again, somebody has to investigate this for real this time. Right, right, right. because, you know, if uh, he had a sweetheart deal getting that land to begin with, you know, in a involving many powerful people in, in the New Mexico are we going to trust them to investigate themselves? Well, these powerful people would want justice for the creditors and would want to clean up any mess that Epstein manipulated them into. Because everything that Epstein did was a mastermind of manipulation, of criminal manipulation, by a man that was so evil and out of control that he couldn't be stopped. It was impossible to stop this man. He was out of control. It's just come out recently that the Virginia Goofrey, who was a resident, I believe, of New York. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is she in New York now? Yeah, but she's come down with the coronavirus. She actually left the hospital yesterday after her doctor wanted to put her into a COVID area in the hospital. 
she said, no, if you put me in that corporate area, I'll never come out. Yeah. So she went home. She's actually in Australia, which is her uh, home now. She's not in New York with okay. the COVID virus. She's in Australia. Okay. Uh, do you think these high-profile uh, victims uh, are still in danger? Are still in danger? Yeah. No. Okay. No. No, I don't think they're in danger at all because they're not witnesses to the risk factor. But I do believe that Mark Epstein honestly believes, as the brother of Jeffrey Epstein, that he's in substantial risk right now. Because yeah, he, he has said that repeatedly. Yeah, that would make sense. Are you still in touch with uh, Maxwell's uh, spokesperson? Yes. Yes, I am. Any idea where Maxwell is? No, people would be speculating as to where she is, but there's no question that the United States government and probably the Virgin Islands government knows where she is. Yeah. Okay, we only got a couple of minutes left. What do you want to leave us with? Anything I haven't asked you that you want the audience to know? Well, the question is how did Epstein manipulate all the rich and powerful people to the degree that he did in creating the most mysterious case in the history of America. There isn't another case this mysterious that has taken the headlines the way this case has. And nothing makes sense in this mystery. Nothing. And I think you could probably make sense of it, Ed, with your private investigative skills oh, and yeah. your lawyers. I, I have my, uh, my heart in this case, you know that. I, I would do whatever I could. Uh, absolutely, yeah. 100%. Um, now with yeah, the, we're going to start getting we're going to start getting you information. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, we'll, keep, we'll talk right after the show. Now, um, uh, with the COVID virus uh, going on in, in New York City right now, how are you holding up with all that? It's not easy for anyone to say this is normal times because it's a new normal and it's very concerning to all of us, especially the hotspot of New York City. It's a tragedy. Governor Cuomo is on the air every day trying to really explain what's taking place, and he's done a real major effort, we must say. And it's very sad. It's horrible for all of us. And you're in an especially high risk due to your age and a pre-existing. You just had surgery just recently, right? Yeah, last summer, and I have to be very at home oriented and stay put. Yeah. yeah. Just like they want everybody to do, to stay at home, stay put. Mr. Hoffenberg, I can't thank you enough once again. You always give us the inside information uh, firsthand uh, without any kind of uh, uh, nonsense or speculation or fantasy. But you see, so, there's so much crazy reporting in, in this story that's just uh, beyond belief. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Ed. Bye-bye. Okay, there again you have Stephen Hoffenberg once again, uh, the former business partner of Jeffrey Epstein. Um, uh, former CEO of the New York Post, uh, working to, to with the government of the Virgin Islands, uh, now wants to work with me. Okay, <laughs> I'm not gonna turn that down. <laughs> you know that, man. You know, I've been a lot on my plate lately, but this would be like you know the case of you know, high point, you know, uh, of my career. I worked on the 2016 Trump uh, Epstein rape lawsuit uh, for the plaintiffs in that case. Or that's some big stuff, Sarah Palin, uh, you know, uh, Charlie Sheen, and some congressional investigation stuff. Um, but this would be the, the, the cherry on the, the top of the hat, if I can get a, uh, some of the funds back to those victims. Uh, I would love to do that. So check me out the, this Thursday evening, 7.30 p.m. No, 7 p.m. I don't even know what time I'm doing this. It's a live show, too. I better be in our time. At GetVocal.com, we're going to be talking to uh, uh, William Ramsey, who's an expert on the West Memphis 3 case. And this is hot on the heels of my exclusive interview with Terry Hobbs, the stepdad of little Stevie Branch, uh, after Terry Hobbs was accused of this murder uh, on the Oxygen Channel uh, by this uh, volunteer fireman who 
Room as a podcast. Uh, so check me out Thursday evening. GetVocal.com. G-E-T-V-O-K-L.com. Thank you so much. Stephen Hoffman. And now a word from our sponsors. OppermanReport.com. Hey, do you like what you're hearing? Do you like the work that you see us doing here at Opperman Report? You can support that work by becoming a member at OppermanReport.com. And as you have access to over 200 exclusive shows and interviews that you can't find on YouTube or Spreaker or iHeart or iTunes or KYAH, you can't find them anywhere else online, exclusive to our member sections, to our members. Also, too, there's images, videos, documents, court docs. And don't forget, you can hear your ad played here on the Opera and Report. Reach hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis because the show is repeated every day all over the world. Contact me at operandreport at gmail.com and I'll give you a good deal on advertising rates. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. Aquadam.net. Give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. Uh, you're left with the mess to clean up, having to deal with the insurance company, uh, not to mention the memories that are lost that you can never replace. Uh, to those who live in flood-prone and hurricane-prone areas, uh, which is just around the corner, prepare now. Hurricane season is right around the corner. Visit Aquadam.net to see how they can help you prepare to avoid flood damage this season and every season thereafter. An Aquadam can be another tool in your arsenal uh, to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. A coffer dam, using water to control water, that can protect your home, your business, your church, your neighborhood, like a dam, but without the beavers. Give Aquadam a call at 707-764-2119, 707-764-2119, or look them up online at Aquadam.net. Uh, they're also on Facebook at Aquadam Inc., or call or email them today. They can help you out. Give them a call. Uh, tell them Opperman Report sent you. Opperman Report, that's 10% off the price to anyone who mentions the Opperman Report. Are you ready to change your life but don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, 7 days a week, just log into kmdlaw.com, that's kmdlaw.com, or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW, that's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents, they handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be, because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. 
Pure Snowflake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. They've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. <laughs> 